Hello, this is Dennis Waitley. Welcome to Wordmaster. I want to congratulate you on your decision to experience the finest audio series available anywhere in the world today for building your mastery of English vocabulary. Think of these 500 words you're about to internalize and utilize in your daily communications as your own Fortune 500, each word representing a step, a tool, a building block to attain both your inner fortune, the clarity of thought through which you gain the power of self-confidence and command the respect of other people, and your outer fortune, which you may define as financial and career success, educational achievement, social standing, or the ability to go beyond your competition in the global information age where knowledge rules and where the words you use are absolutely critical. I think back several decades to George Orwell's classic book aimed against totalitarianism titled 1984. Do you remember reading it or hearing about it? In the book, Orwell described the language of newspeak. The dictatorial government was called Big Brother, and Big Brother's plan was to systematically reduce the number of words people could use. The fewer the words, the fewer the ideas, the less thinking, the less power to the people. Strangely enough, Orwell's vision is coming true in society as we enter the new century, but not through government dictates. Linguistic experts estimate that the average citizen's vocabulary is decreasing about 1% per year. Only about 400 words make up over 80% of our daily conversations, but there are over 450,000 words in the English language. The ability or inability to express our thoughts in words is one of the most important distinctions separating successful leaders from the rest of the population. No matter what profession, it is those individuals with a large vocabulary who are able to accomplish their goals with the most certainty. The power of words in the knowledge era is immense. Well-chosen, carefully considered words can close the sale, negotiate a new career, a promotion or a salary increase, enhance relationships, and change a destiny. Knowledge is power, and a broad understanding of language is the key that unlocks that door. Seventy years of research have proven that those who build their word power greatly increase their likelihood of success and advancement regardless of their occupation. Consider the results of one study by Johnson O'Connor, a great advocate of vocabulary building and a pioneer of vocabulary research. O'Connor and Professor Lewis Thurman of Stanford University gave 100 business students an English vocabulary test. Five years later, all of those who had scored in the upper 10% had attained executive positions. None of those scoring in the lower 25% had similar achievements. Remember, in an interview, giving a presentation, drafting a proposal, writing a business plan, a resume, an important business letter, or conducting a meeting or communicating with significant others in your professional and personal life, your use of words defines who you are, how you think, and how others will judge you. Every time you master a new word, you have acquired a powerful winner's edge for success. Every time you express yourself more succinctly, accurately, and convincingly, you have risen above and beyond your competition. There are many vocabulary programs, but only one Word Master series, and it stands apart from anything on the market, in the classroom, or on the drawing board. The Word Master series is a new stage in the evolution of vocabulary building. It is a quantum leap ahead of the field, and here's why. It gives you the words you need most in a format that will make your understanding and retention virtually automatic. It will enable you to retain the words you hear and ensure that you know how to use them in a way other systems can't. It is especially designed so that men and women can benefit equally. It is the first vocabulary system to combine the revolutionary insight of Johnson O'Connor and the super learning techniques pioneered by Dr. Georgi Lozanov of Bulgaria, whom I met when I was chairman of psychology for the United States Olympic Committee's Sports Medicine Council. Lozanov found that a certain type of music, when blended with subject matter to be studied, produces a mental state of reverie that greatly facilitates retention of the words. In addition to incredible success with students in Eastern Europe, the Suggestopedic music programs have enjoyed success in the United States in recent years, 
and I've used them effectively to help some of our greatest amateur and professional athletes achieve world-class performance in their specialties. Johnson O'Connor discovered in his studies at his human engineering laboratory that you and I learn words in a natural, predictable order of difficulty. Any effective vocabulary system must present us with words in this particular order or we'll waste a great deal of time on words that are either too easy or too complex. In WordMaster, you will hear words in a gradually and gently increasing order of complexity, scientifically predetermined to increase your retention while making your learning both easy and enjoyable. You will hear these enriching words in a calm rhythmic tone set to the background of specially produced classical Baroque music whose slow sensory enhancing qualities have been proven by Dr. Lazanoff and others to increase the power of memory and make learning both pleasing and effortless. So relax, listen, learn, and enjoy. I'll return throughout the series to cheer you on to one of the most rewarding experiences you can undertake in your lifelong journey to excellence. Hello, I'm Van Oreck. Welcome to WordMaster. And I am Christina Lafarge. Van and I will be your guides for this adventure in vocabulary building. In this volume, you will learn 40 words, five words at a time, at a relaxed, natural pace, while listening to some of the greatest music ever written. Music scientifically proven to increase your retention, calm your emotions, and relax your body. We will give you each new word with its definition and spelling, along with short sentences to show you clearly how the word is used. Feel free to speak along with us or to listen quietly as you wish. At the end of each five word unit, we will review each word. Van or I will say the word and then give you a chance to say what it means. We will then give the meaning of the word one more time. Now and then, we will take a break from straight vocabulary building and spend some time on the usage of a word you will have recently learned. How to use a word in context, learning the subtle nuances of a word, learning its opposite. All of this will give you the word power you need to take you beyond competition. If at any point you want to review, just go back to a convenient starting point. If you ever feel the words in the early units are too easy, just go forward. Since the words are in a natural order of difficulty, it is possible that you will want to go forward. And maybe you will just want to stay with us, reviewing some familiar words, and then move smoothly on to the more challenging words. Remember, the key is to relax. Sit comfortably. Just listen. And begin a learning adventure you will never forget. This is Unit 1. Cardinal. C-A-R-D-I-N-A-L. Of prime importance. Principal. Pivotal. That was the cardinal point of his proposal. Everything else hinged on it. His cardinal rule is, what goes around comes around. Cardinal. C-A-R-D-I-N-A-L of prime importance, principal, pivotal. Figment, F-I-G-M-E-N-T, invention of the mind, something imagined, myth. The science fiction story was the figment of a fertile mind. Mickey Mouse was a profitable figment of Walt Disney's imagination. Figment, F-I-G-M-E-N-T. Invention of the mind, something imagined, myth. Muse, M-U-S-E. To consider thoughtfully, ponder, reflect. Let's muse over this idea before we act on it. Susan mused peacefully after she heard about the successful merger. Muse, 
M U S E to consider thoughtfully ponder reflect negligible N E G L I G I B L E so small or unimportant that one may disregard it minor of little account the moisture in hot desert air is negligible since you have so little invested your risk is negligible negligible n e g l i g i b l e so small or unimportant that one may disregard it minor of little account reproach r e p r o a c h to blame for something wrong expressed disapproval larry's performance on the project was above reproach lydia reproached john for ignoring her during football season reproach r e p r o a c h to blame for something wrong expressed disapproval Now let's review the five words we have just learned. We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Cardinal. Of prime importance, principal, pivotal, cardinal. Figment Invention of the mind Something imagined Myth Figment Muse To consider thoughtfully Ponder Reflect Muse Negligible. So small or unimportant that one may disregard it. Minor. Of little account. Negligible. Reproach. To blame for something wrong. Expressed disapproval. Reproach. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's all right. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 2. Spasmodic, S-P-A-S-M-O-D-I-C, sudden but short-lived, fitful, variable. Hank's spasmodic efforts won't please a boss who likes consistency. On cold days, my battery only provides spasmodic power. Spasmodic, S-P-A-S-M-O-D-I-C. Sudden, but short-lived, fitful, variable. Spurn, S-P-U-R-N. To reject with scorn, snub, decline. The star quarterback spurned an offer of a mere million a year. I'm really insulted. They spurned our proposal without even reading it. Spurn. S-P-U-R-N To reject with scorn, snub, decline. Discharge D-I-S-C-H-A-R-G-E To perform as a duty, fulfill, 
execute. She's a model officer who discharges her duties perfectly. The Senate discharged its duty by ratifying the treaty. Discharge. D-I-S-C-H-A-R-G-E. To perform as a duty. Fulfill. Execute. Dissident. D-I-S-S-I-D-E-N-T. One who differs in thought or opinion. We would have total agreement at board meetings, except for Tom, who is such a dissident. Solzhenitsyn was a dissident author during the Soviet period. Dissident. D-I-S-S-I-D-E-N-T. One who differs in thought or opinion. Envoy. E-N-V-O-Y. Anyone entrusted with a mission, an agent, a representative. Don't send your envoy. I would rather talk to you in person. Lydia is the perfect envoy to send to this negotiation. She thinks on her feet and is completely loyal to our company. Envoy. E-N-V-O-Y. Anyone entrusted with a mission, an agent, a representative. Now, let's review the five words we have just learned. We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Spasmodic. Sudden but short-lived, fitful, variable, spasmodic. Spurn. To reject with scorn, snub, decline, spurn. Discharge. To perform as a duty, fulfill, execute, discharge. Dissident. One who differs in thought or opinion. Dissident. Envoy. Anyone entrusted with a mission, an agent, a representative, envoy. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's all right. Go back and listen to this unit as often as you need to. Remember, you can master these words. Congratulations on finishing your first two units of Wordmaster. Let's take a break now for a note on word mastery. A look at how you can use a word you've learned today for greater power in business and daily speech. Frequently, other people ask us to say yes or no to a proposal, to make a decision, or to give them advice. If we don't want to answer right away, we usually say, I'll think about it. Next time, you could answer more effectively by saying, I'll muse over it. Muse connotes careful, quiet consideration of a question. It honors the other person by conveying that his question is worthy of your time, but also hints that you won't be rushed into a decision. Thus, with one word, you've communicated that you are a person who can be trusted to think things through, and that you regard the other person's concerns as being important. You've established credibility and build a relationship at the same time. Muse over this bit of wisdom for a few seconds. Before we go on to Unit 3, let's discuss the super learning music that is playing in the background. As Dr. Waitley mentioned, 
The use of this music increases the overall effectiveness of WordMaster, making learning these new words almost effortless. The slow-paced music behind the words, their definitions, and the sentences allows you to just relax and learn, absorb the new information. This slow tempo Baroque music sort of opens your mind to the words and their meanings without you doing anything except listening. But when we review the five words of a unit, we ask you to listen and say the meaning of the word as you remember it. For the reviews, the pace and the kind of music changes somewhat. Because we are asking you to become active for the review, the music is tailored for this active super learning. Additionally, this type of super learning music energizes the brain and the body. This makes our reviews not only learning tools, but also a pick-me-up to help keep us alert and on track for these enriching words. For our discussions of word usage and application, like we just completed, the tempo and type of music is still of the active super learning variety, but designed to really energize your learning. You get a real brain boost. In fact, it was this type of music that was reported to increase a listener's IQ. And you get that with every usage note. To quickly summarize, the Super Learning 60-beat Baroque music opens your mind and enhances your memory as it relaxes your body and alerts the mind. The active Super Learning music gives a powerful energy boost to the brain, energizing, harmonizing, and sharpening while rebalancing brain and body. Just part of what makes WordMaster a quantum leap in vocabulary building programs. And you reap the benefits almost effortlessly. This is Unit 3. Fisher, F-I-S-S-U-R-E. A narrow opening, a crack, a split. The earthquake opened a fissure in the earth. There's a fissure in that joint which is leaking gas. Fisher, F-I-S-S-U-R-E. A narrow opening, a crack, a split. Menial, M-E-N-I-A-L. Suitable for servants, degrading. Menial labor is better for strengthening my muscles than sharpening my mind. When times are hard, highly qualified people gladly take on menial work. Menial, M-E-N-I-A-L. Suitable for servants, degrading. Archetype, A-R-C-H-E-T-Y-P-E. -E. Standard pattern, original example, model, prototype. Sherlock Holmes is the archetype for all detective characters. Henry Ford's assembly line became the archetype for American manufacturers. Archetype, A-R-C-H-E-T-Y-P-E. -E. Standard pattern, original example, model, prototype. Coalesce. C-O-A-L-E-S-C-E. -E. To come together into one, unite, blend. Our ideas coalesced beautifully in this business plan. No amount of pleading could convince the two unions to coalesce their positions on that issue. Coalesce. C-O-A-L-E-S-C-E. -E. To come together into one. Unite. Blend. Deluge. D-E-L-U-G-E. -E. A great flood. What a fantastic commercial! We received a deluge of calls right after it ran last night. Noah built the ark to escape the great deluge. Deluge. 
D-E-L-U-G-E, a great flood. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Fisher A narrow opening, a crack, a split, fissure. Menial Suitable for servants, degrading, menial. Archetype Standard pattern, original example, model, prototype, archetype. Coalesce. To come together into one. Unite. Blend. Coalesce. Deluge. A great flood. Deluge. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's all right. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 4. Devout. D-E. V-O-U-T Earnestly religious, pious, heartfelt, sincere. Charlie is a devout husband and father. He never neglects his family. Devout Muslims pray several times a day. Devout, D-E-V-O-U-T Earnestly religious, pious, heartfelt, sincere. Farcical, F-A-R-C-I-C-A-L, resembling a ridiculous action or situation, absurd. Our lack of preparation turned the dry run into a farcical exercise. The comedian Victor Borga was a master of farcical music routines. Farcical, F-A-R-C-I-C-A-L resembling a ridiculous action or situation. Absurd. Inaugurate. I-N-A-U-G-U-R-A-T-E. To begin. To make a formal beginning. Initiate. Institute. The President of the United States is always inaugurated on January 20th. We're going to inaugurate our new customer service policy on January 1st. Inaugurate. I-N-A-U-G-U-R-A-T-E. To begin. To make a formal beginning. Initiate. Institute. Lurch. L-U-R-C-H. Sudden pitch or roll to one side. Stagger. Reel. The Mercedes lurched only slightly when the tire blew out. After a few too many drinks, Jason lurched towards the men's room. Lurch. L-U-R-C-H. Sudden pitch or roll to one side. Stagger. Reel. Morose. M-O-R-O-S-E Gloomy or sullen in spirit. Glum, 
ill-humored. Charles Dickens described Scrooge as a morose individual. After his losses in the stock market, Charlie became morose. Morose, M-O-R-O-S-E. Gloomy or sullen in spirit. Glum, ill-humored. Now, let's review the five words you have just learned. We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Devout. Earnestly religious, pious, heartfelt, sincere, devout. Farcical. Resembling a ridiculous action or situation. Absurd. Farcical. Inaugurate. To begin. To make a formal beginning. Initiate. Institute. Inaugurate. Lurch. Sudden pitch or roll to one side. Stagger. Reel. Lurch. Morose. Gloomy or sullen in spirit, glum, ill-humored, morose. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Let's look back for a moment at the word cardinal. The first word in Unit 1. Like many words in the English language, cardinal has a variety of meanings ready for the user to employ. For example, just a moment ago I said, first word in Unit 1. First is an ordinal number, denoting order. And one of Unit 1 is a cardinal number, such as 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Of course, many people associate the word cardinal with the beautiful red bird or the scarlet red color. The red robe of a Catholic cardinal gives rise to the color's name. Many of the words we will share with you have multiple meanings. We'll stop occasionally and focus on such a word and some of its other meanings, other than the one given here. Congratulations! You're 20 words richer now. This is Unit 5. Outspoken. O-U-T-S-P-O-K-E-N. Bold or free in speech. Frank. Vocal. She's outspoken, but not rude. Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds were such outspoken critics at PTA meetings that we put them in charge. Outspoken. O -U -T S-P-O-K-E-N Bold or free in speech. Frank, vocal. Surmise. S-U-R-M-I-S-E To conclude on slight evidence. Guess. Suppose. I surmise that your silence means that you disagree. Based on the little evidence at hand, we surmised that there was no market for the proposed product. Surmise. S-U-R-M-I-S-E. To conclude on slight evidence. Guess. Suppose. Incantation. I-N-C-A-N-T-A-T-I-O-N. 
uttering of words or syllables supposed to produce magical results. Magic chant. The witch doctor's incantations frightened the tribesmen. The motivational speaker's seminar was loaded with catchphrases repeated over and over like incantations. Incantation. I-N-C-A-N-T-A-T-I-O-N. Uttering of words or syllables supposed to produce magical results. Magic chant. Marshall. M A R T I A L. Concerned with war or the military. Our CEO is a retired general, so he takes a martial approach to running the company. After capturing Atlanta, General Sherman placed the city under martial law. Marshall, M A R T I A L. Concerned with war or the military. Pseudonym P S E U D O N Y M. A fictitious name, a pen name. Alias. Mark Twain is the pseudonym of Samuel Clemens. My publisher insisted I use a pseudonym on my first slimy novel. Pseudonym. P S E U D O N Y M. A fictitious name. A pen name. Alias. Now, let's review the five words you have just learned. We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Outspoken. Bold or free in speech. Frank, vocal. Outspoken. Surmise. To conclude on slight evidence. Guess. Suppose. Surmise. Incantation. Uttering of words or syllables supposed to produce magical results. Magic chant. Incantation. Marshall. Concerned with war or the military. Marshall. Pseudonym. A fictitious name, pen name, alias, pseudonym. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 6. Quibbling. Q-U-I-B-B-L-I-N-G. To raise unnecessary or trivial objections. Arguing. Don't listen to their quibbling. They know they have no real argument. Lawyers are always quibbling about the silliest things. Quibbling. Q U I B B L I N G to raise unnecessary or trivial objections. Arguing. Random. R A N D O M. Having no particular pattern, purpose, organization, or structure. Accidental. Unplanned. 
Creativity sometimes comes from random thoughts. Random drug testing may have legal implications for employers. Random. R-A-N-D-O-M. Having no particular pattern, purpose, organization, or structure. Accidental. Unplanned. Scrupulous. S-C-R-U-P-U-L-O-U-S. Cautious in action because of wish to do right. Careful. Exact. Her scrupulous attention to detail made Kathy a great quality control inspector. Orthodox Jews are very scrupulous about eating kosher food. Scrupulous. S-C-R-U. P-U-L-O-U-S. Cautious in action because of wish to do right. Careful. Exact. Statute. S-T-A-T-U-T-E. -T -E. Law passed by a lawmaking body. An order. A rule. The legislature enacted a new statute requiring the use of seatbelts. Does your football pool violate the statute against gambling? Statute. S-T-A-T-U-T-E. -E. Law passed by a lawmaking body. An order. A rule. Surly. S-U-R-L-Y. Characterized by rudeness, ill humor, or gruffness. Bad-tempered. That surly waiter almost growled when I asked to see the dessert menu again. A grizzly is one surly animal. Surly. S-U-R-L-Y. Characterized by rudeness, ill humor, or gruffness. Bad-tempered. Now, let's review the five words you have just learned. We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Quibbling. To raise unnecessary or trivial objections. Arguing. Quibbling. Random. Having no particular pattern, purpose, organization, or structure. Accidental. Unplanned. Random. Scrupulous. Cautious in action because of wish to do right. Careful, exact, scrupulous. Statute. Law passed by a lawmaking body. An order, a rule. Statute. Surly. Characterized by rudeness, ill humor, or gruffness, bad-tempered, surly. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Many of the words you have learned have several meanings beyond the one we gave you. These additional meanings make each word bigger and stronger, adding more power and substance to your vocabulary. Let's look at the word discharge from Unit 2. As we used it, discharge meant to perform as a duty, to fulfill or execute. But there are at least eight other meanings. Discharge is a very rich word. Quickly, a couple of examples. You might look forward to being discharged from the Army, meaning you are released from military duty. 
Or you may know that the Mississippi River discharges into the Gulf of Mexico, meaning it pours out in two. And then there's the usage we hear all too often these days. Harry was discharged from his job after the corporate downsizing, meaning he was dismissed or laid off. Or if you leave the headlights on, the car's battery will discharge and you'll need a jump start, meaning to lose an electrical charge. In the case of gun enthusiasts doing target practice, they discharge their guns, meaning to shoot or fire. I think you get the point. Each word holds great potential as you build your vocabulary. Let's make sure that when your ship of good fortune arrives, you are there as it discharges its bounty. Yes, you get the point. This is Unit 7. Debilitate. D-E-B-I-L-I-T-A-T-E. -E. To make feeble or weak. I no longer debilitate myself with a three martini lunch. Tax increases debilitate the local economy. Debilitate. D-E-B-I-L-I-T-A-T-E. -E. To make feeble or weak. Faction. F-A-C-T-I-O-N. A group within a larger group, often with dissident aims. A clique. Don't let the opposition of a small faction stop our community's progress. Several factions in Congress are fighting over a health care bill. Faction. F-A-C-T-I-O-N. A group within a larger group often with dissident aims, a clique. Righteousness, R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. -S. Conforming to a state of right and justice, virtuous, upright. Righteousness is a rare commodity among a gang of hoodlums. Most people defend their own righteousness and accuse others of wrongdoing. Righteousness. R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. -S -S. Conforming to a state of right and justice. Virtuous. Upright. Scintillating. S-C-I-N. T-I-L-L-A-T-I-N-G Sparkling As with talent, wit, or enthusiasm Brilliant, glittering News about the new film has been hard to come by But a few scintillating details have leaked out Her scintillating performance in her last movie won an Oscar Scintillating S C I N. T-I-L-L-A-T-I-N-G Sparkling, as with talent, wit, or enthusiasm. Brilliant, glittering. Transcend. T-R-A-N-S-C-E-N-D To rise above in excellence or degree. Surpass, exceed. Let's transcend our differences in order to work together on this. His desire for wealth transcended all other considerations. Transcend. T-R-A-N-S-C-E-N-D. To rise above in excellence or degree. Surpass. Exceed. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Debilitate. Debilitate. 
to make feeble or weak, debilitate. Faction. A group within a larger group, often with dissident aims. A clique. Faction. Righteousness. Conforming to a state of right and justice. Virtuous. Upright. Righteousness. Scintillating. Sparkling, as with talent, wit, or enthusiasm. Brilliant, glittering, scintillating. Transcend. To rise above in excellence or degree. Surpass, exceed, transcend. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. This is Unit 8. Welt, W-E-L-T, a ridge or lump raised on the body, usually by a blow. A whipping produced terrible welts on the slave's back. The police officer's strong warning raised emotional welts on my young psyche. Welt, W-E-L-T, a ridge or lump raised on the body, usually by a blow. Accrue, A-C-C-R-U-E, to accumulate, to increase, to grow. How much interest did your account accrue last year? A rise in public opinion accrued to Congress after they cut taxes. Accrue, A-C-C-R-U-E, to accumulate, to increase, to grow. Administer, A-D-M-I-N-I-S-T-E-R, to manage, supervise, or have charge of, direct, carry out. Who is going to administer your estate? He administered that service so well that it always made a profit. Administer, A-D-M-I-N-I-S-T-E-R to manage, supervise, or have charge of, direct, carry out. Adorn, A-D-O-R-N, to increase the beauty of, decorate, enhance. She adorned herself with magnificent jewels. The builder adorned his favorite houses with gingerbread trim. Adorn. A-D-O-R-N, to increase the beauty of, decorate, enhance. Animosity, A-N-I-M-O-S-I-T-Y. Bitter dislike directed at something or someone. Hostility, hatred. They overcame their mutual animosity to work together. Animosity seems to increase when communication breaks down. Animosity, A-N-I-M-O-S-I-T-Y. Bitter dislike directed at something or someone. Hostility, hatred. Now let's review the five words you have just learned. 
We will say each word and pause. During the pause, say the meaning of the word as you remember it. Then we will give the meaning of the word. Welt. A ridge or lump raised on the body, usually by a blow. Welt. A crew. To accumulate, to increase, to grow. A crew. Administer. To manage, supervise, or have charge of. Administer. Adorn. To increase the beauty of. Decorate. Enhance. Adorn. Animosity. Bitter dislike directed at something or someone. Hatred. Hostility. Animosity. If you haven't mastered some of the words yet, that's fine. Go back and listen to this unit as often as needed. Remember, you can master these words. Sometimes you have to make strong accusations against someone who's being unjust or is unfairly blocking your success. But you have to do it without sounding like a jerk yourself. If you are not assertive enough, you won't get your point across. But if you come on too strong, no one will listen, and you'll defeat your purpose. Imagine that Frank, a manager in a key position, has taken a strong dislike to you, and that he unfairly prevents your climbing the ladder. You want to go to his manager, Steve, and complain. Steve says, well, why do you think Frank is against you? If you say that Frank hates you, that will sound a bit strong, and Steve may not take you seriously. But if you claim only that Frank dislikes you, Steve will probably shrug and say, well, that's life. Try saying this. For some reason, Frank has a strong animosity towards me. Animosity essentially is not different from hatred or strong dislike, but it conveys a more refined, level-headed tone. You'll sound like someone who should be taken seriously. Steve may well hear you out, and your problems may be ended. Word master strikes again. You're 40 words richer now. Let's go on to volume two. <laughs>